One of the major factors holding back the supply chain is a widespread shortage of labor. And while some of the labor shortages we hope to be addressed by the e reopening of the economy as the pandemic recedes, I'm not convinced that will fully address the problem. Uh, Dr. Stevenson, can you briefly describe the effects of the labor shortage and where we are seeing the largest deficits? Um, yes, yeah, so you know, we are still missing a million and a half, roughly, workers who haven't returned to the labor force. Let me put this in the broad spectrum, which is we've seen declining labor force participation for prime age men for many, many, many decades. What's saved the United States has been the rising labor force participation of women, which has pulled us out of every single previous recession with women's labor force participation growing faster than male labor force participation. That's not happening right now. And so it's crucial that we bring women back. I think it's also crucial that we solve the problem of declining male labor force participation. Some of that's about making sure that there is widespread availability of jobs, but also that workers have access to the training that will give them the good quality jobs that they can stay attached to, um, that motivate them to be in the labor force. Mm -hmm. I'm particularly worried about ongoing labor shortages as demand for services resumes. This committee's heard a lot about our big consumer demand for goods. We really liked our goods during the pandemic, but I believe we are gonna wanna go back to things like preventative health care, elective health care, enrichment, educational products. So when I say education workers, I'm not talking about government, I'm not talking about public school teachers, I'm talking about private sector. Right. All of that inflation is very, very low, demand is low, if it comes back and the workers don't, that's going to be the source of inflation that you're having hearings about next year. Yeah. And uh, that million and a half you talked about that has not returned to the workforce is uh, still falls far short of the nearly 10 million jobs that go uh, uh, unanswered in the economy today. A few weeks ago, Chairman Powell, the Federal Reserve, testified before the House Financial Services Committee that part of the labor shortage is being fueled by an inordinately high number of retirements. We just don't have the workers to replace those who are leaving the labor force. Now, thankfully, uh, immigrants are ready and willing to fill those jobs. In your view, what's the potential role of immigrant workers in mitigating the current labor shortage? I think that Congress should take immediate steps to ensure that undocumented immigrants who are in the United States, particularly young ones, can stay and can work because we need them in the labor force. Um, we are going to have to open our borders back up and welcome workers from around the world and welcome students from around the world back into our schools. That's a place where we get a lot of our innovation from uh, that sort of rich source of immigrant labor. So I think that's a very important part of expanding well, our labor. You're not supply. alone in that view. Leading business groups in this country agree that robust immigration reform is urgently needed to address our labor shortage. And I'm talking about uh, not only in the question of dealing with uh, undocumented workers, but even in terms of our visa process, so there is an enormous backlog. Uh, I, I wanted to ask uh, 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 Dr. Spriggs, uh, the pandemic exposed or exacerbated disparities throughout all sectors of the economy, including the supply chain. Recent research from the University of Chicago's Booth Business School showed that customers delayed payments to their suppliers when their suppliers had a female or black trade credit officer at 10 to 20 percent higher rates relative to the payments to white men. Are you familiar with this or other research regarding racial or gender bias in the supply chain? I'm not familiar with that specific study. We saw many disparities that we did not want to see with the payroll protection plan, loans through uh, the slow rate at which black workers were able to be rehired despite the fact that many employers said that they were desperately looking for anyone. A number of these cleavages unfortunately showed themselves during this crisis. What broader negative effects could bias in the supply chain produce for minority communities? Well, this makes it harder for those businesses to survive in this setting, and it was very hard for for them to get access to the liquidity to survive in this setting. Frictions in the economy hurt 
everyone, they drive up cost. And so we all lack because of that. Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, with uh, just taking one community that I'm infinitely familiar with, the Hispanic community, uh, largest minority in the country, growing exponentially, um, fastest rate of growth of small businesses are Latina-owned businesses. But if they are disproportionately affected uh, by our payment process uh, in the supply chain effort and access to capital and all of those things, then the biggest growth faces some of the biggest challenges, which means at the end of the day, there are consequences for the country far beyond the community itself. And that's something I look forward to working with the chairman on.